Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Oak Bytes Blogazine and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge I fought Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes episode 48. It's Friday 27th of May 2011 and tonight you've got myself, Tim and Roy on the show. So without further ado, we're going to crack straight on and Roy I think is going to start us off on hopefully quite a few interesting topics tonight, there's been quite a few things in the news so with that little introduction Roy I'll pass it over to you and uh, we'll start straight off. Yeah I thought um, thought we could actually have a small discussion about the North Korea situation with regards to computers because there is a report uh, that I've seen in three sources so far uh, about them trying to make their own PCs or laptops or something of that sort. Uh, and that's supposed to run Linux. Uh, I think they called Red Star or something to do with Star. Yes, it's called Red Star. Uh, I believe it incorporates KD3, the last time I checked. Uh, and this actually comes at an interesting time from my point of view because, uh, uh, there was an interview with one of the, uh, one of the big people from the secret agencies in the United States where they kind of make the admission about the Stuxnet, uh, I think it's called Stuxnet or something like that, mm-hmm. virus. Uh, and it, seems, it seems as though the government was involved in testing this thing before it basically was found in the wild. Uh, and maybe the purpose of it was to spy on certain people who were using Windows and unfortunately not had their centrifuges or any facilities and computers and secret information uh, Lit to the not to the web, but as opposed to the those who who are in charge of the botnet or exploiting these uh, weaknesses. So I, I I wrote an article. I actually have been writing for years about the fact that Windows does have some back doors in it, or even if it doesn't have back doors by design, uh, the secret agencies uh, have these things which we know about. Uh, one of them called uh, CIPAB uh, from the FBI, where if they want to intrude a person's Windows box, they have the tools to do that. Uh, maybe maliciously, but if they design it in a certain way and they say, we are the good guys and we can do things to your computer, well, okay, fine. I suppose they have some uh, reasonable uh, explanations, like this person might be a terrorist, but uh, then you have to ask, you know, is it reasonable to give people a PC and say to every person who buys a PC, well, we can always go into your computer if we feel like it. Uh, of course, it goes back to the understanding of what civil liberties require and the fact that you do need some protection from those in power in some cases. Uh, this this was an interesting... Have you read anything about it so far? I haven't, I haven't read a lot. I mean, I, I was going to say a few things on Stuxnet and um, a couple of other technologies which are used uh, to target Windows machines. Uh, certainly in the, in the realm of crime fighting. Uh, I've covered them a couple of times on my blog before, but sorry, if you carry on with the... Uh... Yeah. It actually reminds me of a separate thing. I wasn't I wasn't planning to talk about any of these things, but I, I just have them before me uh, as I look at some of the latest things I was writing about. Did you see anything about the so-called uh, Apple so-called viruses? Uh, which I believe is something that was started with AdBot, one of the major boosters uh, of Microsoft and ZDNet. He sells Windows books. Uh, and he was looking around the forums of Apple, and people were, as always, you know, something's installing things they aren't supposed to install. How did they install these things? Well, they basically took something, they downloaded the program, and they say, well, I would like you to install it. Which, of course, the program can do anything, it just delete your hard drive. Now, of course, by the definition of virus, this is not really a virus, because it doesn't spread. You really have to install it. Uh, and there was a big discussion about it and basically provocative blogs. And there is a new blog now in CNET, and it's called something like uh, Somebody's Rants, but what's her name? Something like Melissa's Rants or something. 
Uh, and the way it's presented, it's supposed to be just a provocation block for hits. Uh, and she was pushing the same lines, oh, Max got viruses, and you know, no system is secure, it's the very uh, classic explanation, the Microsoft excuse, like, all the companies are evil, uh, everything is not secure, and, you know, we are not the exception, and everything is broken, and everything is bad, everything crashes. Uh, uh, but in this case, it's, it's just simply not true. Uh, and I've been seeing this for the past week, and, and even though I, I don't like Apple, to be honest, I just don't admire them so much as a company, I just think that in this case we do have to defend them because I've been seeing the same type of uh, uh, business against Android and Linux recently. Yeah, I mean, there, there is a very clear definition of virus, and uh, encouraging somebody to download a, a, a program which does a specific task, maybe, like you say, delete your hard drive, is not a virus. It's a bit like me convincing an Apple user to take their Mac and drop it in a bucket of water. That's not a virus. It's just yeah. the, them following a set of instructions and uh, consequently their machine being hosed as a result. Yeah, if, um, if there are administrators in this machine, which of course, uh, if you set up a machine for a person in your family who's not very good with technology, you might prefer not to give them a root password <laughs> for all sorts of reasons. And you might say, well, if you really do need a root password, maybe it's better if I do that. Maybe it's better if I change your uh, your clock or if I change your uh, settings and programs and uh, do things which might make the machine difficult to to, to restart. Uh, even things like patches. So so you know it's another discussion has been shifted from by the uh, I don't want to say Apple bashers. It's mostly people who try to defend Windows by saying everything is not secure. Uh, they would say things like, oh well. But, even people who are not administrators can install it. Well, I'm sure people who use Macs usually do have their administrator administrator password anyway. Uh, but the the you see the, the discussion is now shifted to whether you need a password to install it or not. Well, it doesn't exactly matter. You do need to actually want to install it. Uh, but actually, what also they miss, uh, and I, I occasionally commenters put in these comments, which I quite enjoy, is we don't have these problems in Linux because we have the repositories, which is the thing which goes way, way back before the Apple Store, the thing called the App Store, and I think they actually have a trademark on it now, which is ridiculous enough, but uh, the we have these uh, trusted repositories of, of uh, things being compiled for our specific platforms, having been tested thoroughly for different versions of uh, Linux or different distributions. So we, we don't really have this issue of trust when it comes to packages. And we don't have to download things and actually worry about them not doing the right thing. If if it does happen, well, we can look at the distributor and say, well, why did you put this package online? Uh, same happens with Mozilla or Android and all kinds of things. Well, what I, th I think the next topic, um, I think we should have a little quick discussion about this. Not so much linked with this, but more to do with another popular um, medium, and it's the Facebook and Mark Zuck Zuckerman's uh, yeah. views on Facebook and privacy yeah. and free speech. And yeah. I recently read, uh, well, I heard on the local radio, he was making comments about Facebook and how um, the government shouldn't intervene in freedom of speech. And it did raise a few interesting topics. Firstly, because freedom of speech, I would hope, is a right that everybody would advocate or champion but when somebody like Mark uh, Zuckerman is making that remark he's in business with Facebook on the basis of free speech so of course it's in his interests to promote it Roy I, thought I was going to start you off and I don't know I'm putting you on the spot but what was your take on his comments uh, and when you mentioned this I thought you were going to say something about his 13 year old uh, I'm coming on to that yeah, one that's the second you know, part yeah, yeah. Uh, several things I saw recently about Facebook I haven't heard anything about the privacy uh, situation apart from that, but when it comes to the uh, freedom of speech thing, I will only say that they aren't so renowned for respecting free speech because they shut on certain groups which they consider to be not with the not popular views. Uh, lots of examples like that, but of course they couldn't give you evidence because they shut down the groups. Uh, and they have these groups uh, which were reported on originally uh, at a time in the New York Times uh, whose goal is to basically review things and decide this is appropriate, this is not appropriate, and it's, it's always a tricky thing. I, could, I couldn't really blame them for, you know, trying to, you know, some people exp exploit the, this freedom of speech and this extreme uh, liberalism, if, if, if I might call it that. 
to uh, insult people, to spread lies, to uh, distort, to threaten people, and then they'll say, oh, it's freedom of speech. Well, your freedom of speech stops at some point where 